Hi guys! Welcome back to So Crafty Nana. My name is Teresa and today I have another Thanksgiving project for you. Today we're going to look at how to make different table decor. You might call them favors, you could put them at place settings, they could be door gifts or something like that or hostess gifts. Um, take you know something for people to take at the end of the day. Um, I'm going to actually use some scattered throughout the tables at my Thanksgiving gathering. And so let me show you a few of what I've made. So there's this one. It's a little like gift bag sort of um, that I did some coloring and there's a uh, some it's a die cut uh, cut out there and some pretty decoration on there. And then here's another version which I think is really cute. It looks just like a gift bag that you would buy. Put some pumpkins in that one. And then here's one that's at one of those pillow boxes and I'll tell you where I got those and um, I'll talk to you about all the decor uh, as we're going ahead and making some of these. And I also have some tips and tricks to tell you about that I learned as I was going through making them. And then here's the last one that I have um, to show you. And then we'll just kind of look at the various other ones that I have as well when I take you down to the table. So just some housekeeping before we get started. If you like this video, I would really appreciate a like. And if you wanna see more, uh, I would love it if you would subscribe. If you missed my other Thanksgiving video, I did a Thanksgiving utensil holder. I'll go ahead and link that up in wherever the cards are up here. Uh, and you can take a look at that after you watch this video. And uh, I am an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! So you'll notice that most of the products that I use are Stampin' Up! I will have links in the description below to my uh, website, my blog post that'll go along with these projects. Um, and have close-up pictures and things like that, um, as well as a link to my Stampin' Up! store if you want to purchase anything uh, through there. So I think that's all the housekeeping. I'm really excited to show you some of these and talk you through some of the lessons learned through trial and error that I had with these projects. So let's get started. Okay, here we are at my tabletop. These are the supplies we're going to be using to make our um, treat boxes, favors, whatever you want to call them. We're going to go ahead and we're going to make these two and then I'm going to pull out the other ones that I have and we'll just kind of walk through those really quickly at the end. So I think we're going to start with this one, the cracker treat box, and then we will move on to this one. We have some die cutting and stamping to do with this one. So I'm going to scooch that off to the side. So let me tell you about this. I went ahead and I uh, die cut this already. This is our cracker and treat dies. This is in the annual catalog. And this is a standalone die. It's something that I really overlooked initially until I started seeing it being used, but it's such a great um, die set. It's got all these neat labels in here. You can do stars and hearts, a couple of tiny labels, just a really, really good multiple use set. So that's what that one's from. And so I'm going to go ahead and I think what I'd like to do with this one is I'm going to cut this. This is our glorious gingham um, designer series paper. This is pecan pie. And I think I'm going to cut this into little strips to go on um, maybe just the ones that I'm not decorating. Hmm. Actually, I think I want it to go on um, five of the six. So you can see the score lines here. One of these will overlap, but we still have five other ones that'll show. So I've already measured this and a half inch by two and a quarter inches will fit within this rectangle for each one of these. So I need five of those that are a half inch by two and a quarter. So I'm gonna pull out my paper trimmer and I'm going to go ahead and measure on this side of the blade at a half inch and I'm going to go ahead and cut that off and then I'm going to do another one that's at a half inch. All right and then I'm 
gonna take each one of those and see how many two and a quarter. I think I need another one, but let's, I didn't do the math ahead of time. So two and a quarter, there's one. Yep, two and a quarter, there's two. That one's not long enough. And then this one, two and a quarter. All right, three, four, and so I want one more half inch strip. And we'll cut that at two and a quarter. All right. And then I'll save these. Every scrap goes in my scrap bin. <laughs> I don't throw anything away because you never know what card you might need those pieces on. So I'll put my trimmer away and then we're gonna go ahead and just attach these down and then we'll go ahead and we'll uh, score and burnish or burnish each of our score lines. I'm gonna use just some Stampin' Seal Plus There we go, it's got a little bit on my desk. And I'm just gonna try to make sure that's tucked under. Just gonna try to give it approximately an equal um, border around it. It doesn't have to be exact. Pull that adhesive off of there. I'm gonna grab my other silicone mat for this just to make sure I don't get it on my desktop. And the next one. And the next one. And then the last two. Okay. And you can always with the seal plus just if you get over the edge just turn it under a little bit on top of itself and it works just fine. Okay so that's what we have so far stuck down really nicely. I'm going to grab my bone folder and I'm going to start folding and burnishing on each of these center score lines. I don't worry about the outside ones. They pretty much come together. If you wanted to, you could fold these and burnish them. I don't find it to be too much of a, tr of a problem for me, but that's certainly an option for you as well. I'm gonna go ahead and get each one of these in the center. Okay. And then the reason we didn't do that last one is because that overlaps. That's how that goes together. So I'm not gonna put it together just well, actually, I can go ahead and put it together. Let's put some seal on there. And we'll just put that together. And you're just going to kind of line that up and give it a press. You can put your finger in there if you need to to help give that a good press. And then I'm going to make sure that that, where it overlaps, goes on the bottom. So I want to decorate up here. So that's on the bottom. I'm going to decorate right there. And I pulled out what I want to decorate with. I've decided I want this ribbon. And let me grab that ribbon so I can tell you what that is. That is the center stripe ribbon. And this is in Pecan Pie. It's got the Pecan Pie Center Stripe. And this is in our uh, new catalog, the mini catalog. And I'll have everything linked uh, in my blog post so you don't need to worry about um, that right now. And then I have um, just some scraps of cardstock. I'm going to cut out a flower with my Petal Park Punch. There's 
This is the Petal Park Punch. This is in our annual catalog. I love this punch. Um, it has the little leaf and then it has the little flower that you can do. I'm going to do one flower in this red in this pretty cherry cobbler. Like that. There's my three pieces. And then I'm going to take this little strip and I want to get myself a couple of leaves. There we go. There's a lot of little pieces around, but that's no problem. I've got my little leaves there. And we'll just move all of this off to the side. With that punch. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is put this flower together. And I like to just use my fingers and just sort of curl that a little bit, very gently. I, all I really want to do is make it not exactly flat. That's all I'm really doing. Not a whole lot of curling, just trying to make it a little bit less than flat, I guess is what I want to say. All right, so there we go. Then I'm going to take some multi-purpose glue, dab in the center, dab in the center on the largest and the medium one. Then I'm going to put the medium on top of the large just sort of stagger those leaves. And then I'm gonna put the small one on top, again, sort of staggering the leaves. And then I just give it a good press down like that in the center, and we're gonna let that dry. And then here's my two leaves that I'll, I'll glue on. So I think I'm gonna need some glue dots for the leaves, and I think I'm going to use dimensionals, uh, a one dimensional on the back of this. And that's going to go in the center, and I am going to add a center to the flower, but I think I just want that to go right in the center here. And let's see what embellishment we want to use here. I really love these uh, 2022 to 2024 in color pearls. I just think they're beautiful and you could use any color. Um, I think I'm going to use this pinkish color here. It's the Sweet Sorbet. It looks pink in the jewels. Let me grab my Take Your Pick and I'll use the putty end of my Take Your Pick tool right here. I'm just going to scoop it up and stick it down. I love that. I think that looks so pretty. All right, get that out of the way. And then we're gonna add our leaves. And I think I'm gonna add my leaves on this side, both of them, and then we'll put our bow on the other side. So I'm going to take my glue dots and I think I want my leaves flat on the package. So I'm gonna put it on the bottom. I could glue it to or stick it to the back of the flower, but I think I really just want it down flat so there's space in there. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. Just a glue dot, one glue dot on there. We'll put that like that. I like that. Give them a press from inside. And then we're going to go ahead and put this bow right up here in the corner. I am going to trim the ends, but let's go ahead and get that on. And again, I'm going to use a glue dot for that a glue dot on the back of that knot. Pull that up and we're going to stick that down right at the corner, right next to, oops, let's put it down just a little, right next to the flower so that can go behind just like that. I'm going to grab my fabric scissors and I am just going to trim that a little bit. Um, like that. Okay. And then to tie this one shut, I thought I would use twine. So I've got, I think this is the, I think this is copper clay. Um, but I think, eh, actually, I don't think I like that. I think I'm going to use. This twine actually came in a uh, paper pumpkin kit. 
Or maybe I'll use natural. Yeah, I think I'll use natural. So many decisions to make. So basically all I do is I go ahead and cut off a length of it and I know I always cut too much, but that's okay, I don't mind. And I tie one end like this. And because I have a bow already on here, I'm gonna tie this in a knot instead of a bow because I don't wanna have another bow there. So I really cut too much for this one. I won't do that again. Oops. Uh, that might be enough to tie that. So we'll see if we can. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put my candy in here. I think I'm gonna put a little pack of Whoppers in there. You can put a lip balm, you can put some hard candies. I think in one of them I put three uh, Werther's Original candies in there. Just kind of whatever you want that will fit. Um, the large pack of Lifesavers does not fit. Um, I did put that in the bigger treat package, but it did not fit in this one. So let me go ahead and tie this knot and then this one will be done. All right. And there we go. Another one done. So the next one we are using, hold on a second, let me get some things out of the way. This um, bag, box, whatever you want to call it, is a die from the Tricks and Treats dies. It's this, it looks like this and you cut two of them. So you have to run it through and then run it through again to cut two pieces. One is the front and one is the back of the bag. So that's where that comes from. And then we're gonna do something a little bit different and I did this on one of my samples. We're going to use this little oval to cut out a little handle on these. And that oval comes from the Sending Cheer dies. It's a little label die that goes in here that holds some of these words. Great use for an extra die that you have. I mean, I don't know how much I'm gonna use for you on a little teeny die like that, but for this purpose, fabulous. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. I'm gonna grab some tape. This is just post-it tape that I have to just stick that down. I'm just eyeballing it kind of center, maybe about a quarter of an inch down and somewhat straight. And while I send that through, I'm gonna go ahead and send my little crate through as well. And these are the crate dies from Rustic Crate. And this is again, another really cool die set because it cuts out and really makes it look wood grain. I just love that. So I'm gonna put those on and I'm gonna send this through and I'm gonna do that off camera. It's right here to my left. So I'll be right back with you. I'm using my stamp and cut and emboss machine. I have my full size machine over here as well as my mini. And I'm gonna pull this off. So this is gonna give me a little label that I can use later. And then I'm gonna go ahead and lay these like this and sort of approximate the same location, close as I can, and put this through. All right, and there's that one. Quick and easy. All right, let me put that over here. And that little die. Okay, so then we have our box done. The next step with this, well, let me push these out real quick. There's that. Get those dies out of my way. Where's my take your pick? Sometimes you need to take your 
take your pick tool and just kind of push it out or encourage it out. Perfect. Okay, so these are my two crate pieces that we'll put together in a minute. I want to go ahead and stamp uh, on this. I'm going to put the same sentiment I did on another one, which is blessed beyond measure. And that comes from the rustic crate uh, stamps. And I'm just going to use tuxedo black memento ink. And I'm going to ink it up. Tap, tap, tap. And I do want, this is a photopolymer stamp, so I do want some cushioning underneath it. So I'm going to go ahead and use my stamp and pierce mat and just position this about centered at the top. And there we go. Love it. Okay, so that one's done. And we're going to go ahead, let me get this ink out of my way so I don't put my fingers in it. We're going to go ahead and put this little crate together. I'll show you how you do that. It was a little confusing for me at first when I first got this set because I wanted to bend this backwards because we're used to that with our score lines, but you actually have to bend it forward on these score lines. So I don't burnish it with the, the um, bone folder. I just use my fingers and just really crease it good with my fingers. And I find that the multi-purpose glue works just fine for this. Uh, it gives you that little bit of wiggle room when you put the crate together to make sure that you get it lined up. So I'm going to just put a few dabs, and I mean dabs, not a lot, of glue on each one of these. Little tabs. And then I'm going to take this front, and I find it easiest to sort of line the bottom. And then you just have to make sure you get all of those tabs pushed in. And then last thing I do is just realign. All right. And then once I'm aligned, hold it down and let the glue set for just a few seconds. That's all it needs. And then you've got your little crate. Isn't that cool? I love this, this die set, love it. So that's gonna go on here, and then we're gonna put our little pumpkins inside. So let's go ahead and, um, yeah, let's go ahead and assemble. I was just trying to think of how I wanted to do this. Assemble our box or bag. I don't even know what to call this. Is it a bag? Is it a box? It's a box without a lid. I'm not really sure what it is. We've got those creases, so there's one side. All right, and last one. Now, lesson learned with the box. You have to make sure you get it squared when you put it together. So it's, it's really important when you do the gluing that you line up your top and your bottom and that you're straight. Um, otherwise your box is going to sit wonky. It's not the end of the world, but you know, if you want it, if you want it to be sit nicely, you do need to be really cautious. So I'm going to go ahead once again, pull in my silicone mat and I'm going to put some stamp and seal plus on there. And you notice I went over the edge. So I'm just going to pull that back, fold it over itself. That's totally fine. Not a problem just like that. And then we are going to stick these together and I'm lining up that bottom right here where my finger is and I'm lining up that top and making sure they're even. And that looks pretty good to me, I hope. Sometimes it's just a little bit of a Hail Mary or a prayer or I don't know what it is. Okay. Little stamp and seal plus on that one. This one you can lay down, but you can see that mine doesn't quite match up perfectly. So I'm just going to give it a little nudge up there 
to make sure my top is lined up and then I'm gonna lay this down. So that one didn't turn out perfect, but I think it's gonna be okay. Yeah, it didn't turn out perfect. I'll just make sure I cover that with some paper or something. I don't think I can get it apart. Nope. We're just gonna leave it for the purposes of today. Now the bottom, you can do multiple ways. You can put one flap down, you can glue these two and do that. I just do it simply uh, folding the small flaps in, then one large flap, glue on the other large flap or adhesive of some sort. And this is where you wanna make sure you've got it squared up really nicely or as well as you can and then just press it like that. Oops, press it like that. Let's keep it square here. And then I turn it over and press inside with the bone folder. Make sure that adhesive really sticks down there. And you can see that one sits fine. It's, it's you know, maybe not perfect at the top, but it does sit up fine. So that's the goal. And the bottom's nice and stuck now. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add this and I'm putting it down flat, the crate, because I'm going to have the um, pumpkins up on dimensionals a little bit, sticking out a little bit. So I do wanna get a decent amount of adhesive on here to make sure this stays. And I'm just lining up the bottom, sort of, and sort of the sides and we can reach inside and make sure that that's good and stuck. Okay, that's where we are with that one. I'm gonna set that aside and I'm gonna pull in our pumpkins. Now these were, were created with the pick of the patch um, stamp set, or I'm sorry, yes, stamp set and the, the pick of the patch punch. It's a builder punch and I just, uh, stamped them in the same color as the cardstock. These were all scraps of cardstock, and then I just punched them out uh, with the punch. So they're not all perfect, but they're they look like pumpkins, and I love them. So I'm gonna go ahead. I just laid them out here, so I need to go ahead and glue the stems onto them, and I do that just like this. little dab of glue and then I decide kind of how I want that stem to look. So let's get some of that glue off. Yeah, we all right. And then this one, I think I just want it a little bit. I want him to be taller. There we go, like that. Okay, so then those are all stuck. And I'm gonna grab my dimensionals. And on these, you notice I'm kind of covering that stem with the dimensional. That's just giving it a little extra adhesive. And I'm only putting a dimensional at the top of those. I'm putting it on this one everywhere. But these are gonna sit down inside that crate, so I don't want the bottom to have a dimensional. They will work with the dimensional on them, but I really just want the top of them to stick away. So I would use a different kind of adhesive, like my Seal Plus at the bottom, like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and place these inside. Oops. Peel off the backing. And then I like to hold them together so I can decide how I want them. Whether I want like the yellow in the back, which I think I do. And then I want this one sort of at an angle like that. And then this one is gonna be piled up in the back like that. And then I have one leaf that I was thinking about putting in there, but I kind of just like it this way. So I don't think I'm gonna put that leaf in. And I don't think I'm gonna put a bow on either. I just like the simplicity of that, unless I wanna put a twine bow. Um, I may decide to do that at a later point, but I think for now, I'll just go ahead and leave it without a bow. And this'll be a very simple one 
Let me scooch things out of the way. So those are the two that we were gonna uh, create today. Move some things out of the way. So we've got these two. Now this one, I think I could put some lifesavers in there. I could put, I have little bags of M&Ms that go down in there really nicely. So whichever you wanted to put inside these, uh, there's plenty of room. One of them I put um, milk duds, a couple of milk duds in there or something like that. So lots of things you can put in there. So let me go ahead and pull over a few of my other ones and I just wanna show you those and just talk you through a few of um, the, the specifics about them. So these are some of the other ones that I have. And, um, and you can see I put different candies inside them. This one I colored with Stampin' Blends markers, um, just Granny Apple Green and Pecan Pie was stamped uh, and die cut, really simple. Uh, this is similar to this and this is similar to that as well. So let me move those out of the way. And then here's these that I did. Um, and I think I put, um, some Werther's in one, and I think I put uh, Whoppers in the other or something like that. So these are the same Petal Park Punch, just a little bit different um, design, nothing special. I did use the DSP like I did on the one today on this one, and a little For You tag. And then this, I wanted to talk a little bit about the pillow box. So these flowers are a retired uh, die set, but you could absolutely use the Petal Park or any die cut flowers that you have. This is the Bow Punch. Um, but these little pillow boxes, these are from one of our online kits collection kits. It's called Let's Party Treat Packaging Kit, and it's a kids set. So I got this set when it was on, uh, when we there was a kit sale going on in the summer. Great deal, so keep an eye out for something like that because I knew I just wanted the pillow boxes and you know you could have them with the blue side out or the yellow side out and it just makes a really simple quick gift giving. You can put a um, gift card in there, a treat in there, you know a thank you. You could put cash in there and just a little thank you on the front of it and give it to someone, your hairdresser or something like that. Um, just a really nice little quick uh, package to be able to give someone. Really any of these are. So I think that's all I wanted to talk about today. I do want to say I really appreciate you spending time with me and watching my videos. Again, if you missed my other Thanksgiving video, I'll link it here at the end of this one. And uh, if you really, if you like this, please give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. And if you'd like to see more, I would love to have you as a subscriber. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.